Oh yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> Do a Stephen Fry greeting. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. It's a book dragons podcast. That was me doing Stephen Fry impression. Yeah. Very impressed by it, I have to yeah. say. <laughs> Giving that a solid like eight out of ten there. Eight out of ten gets. Not which makes no sense, he's not the up It doesn't matter. It's it's comedy, whatever. <laughs> And this is episode two of the Book Dragons podcast. It is. Yeah. Yeah, we made um, it this far. Yeah. Gotta be good. Uh, and we're a bit late. It would normally be up by this point. Um, but we'll, it, we'll, it will be up soon. There were some... There by was... the time you listen to this, it will be up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's my fault. Sorry. Okay. I, I was busy on Friday. Yeah. Very extreme circumstances. So I don't think we'll let you off. <laughs> it's good to know, you know. <laughs> I could bring a note, I guess, from my mum, you know. Yeah, I think it's Keith Rachel from the podcast. I think we need a note. Yeah, I'll really. get one. I'll get one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say a quick thanks to everyone who listened last week because I've had a, a couple of people responding quite positively Which to this. Is amazing. Yeah, I mean... it's very encouraging. So thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you, because I know that you've finished Divergent, which we'll get onto later, yes, yeah. but what are you reading now? Have you moved on to another book? I have. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, I am... Uh, I'm, re- <laughs> I'm rereading um, the first Mary Gentry book by Laurel K. Hamilton, which we probably should not talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the woman who wrote the... Uh, Anita Blake series? Yeah. Well, she did this other series and she was like, okay, I'll just drop any pretense at plot right now. This is just an adult <laughs> <laughs> book. I probably should have told you this before we started recording, but yeah, that's what I'm reading right that's now. That's okay. I wanted to catch your guard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no. Well, I've got... I did get a big delivery of more socially acceptable books to be reading, <laughs> but that is what's on my Kindle right now. Um, and it's okay, actually. There's more There's more plot in it than I was expecting. Um, but I hear it goes crazy things. Well, like when you get into the sequel, as I, there's many, many sequels. I think eventually there's a... It comes to a situation where I believe she's pregnant with twins and there are five fathers. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm both disgusted and strangely intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> the only two feelings you can have. Yeah, Thomas. exactly. <laughs> um, well, I'm still reading Good Omens. I'm yeah. being really slow with it. Um, I don't know what page I'm on. It occurs to me that because I'm reading it in ebook format. Like uh, if yeah. if I have it sideways, I'm on page one hundred and fifty. If I have it the other way, I'm on page seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> I am on. So I... I don't know. I'm halfway through. I'm gonna make the effort to push through, and finish it, so we can yeah. talk about it. Well, next I'm week. about three quarters <laughs> of the way through on that at the moment. Mm. Um, according to my audio book, because I've been mm. listening to it on the way to and from so, work. So. so you've overtaken me already. Um, well, yeah, but I'm cheating because I'm yeah. not actually reading it, am I? If someone else is doing all the hard work, I just listen while I'm stuck in a traffic jam. True, true. Um, right, we'll get on to the news. Uh, the, there was quite big news this week. There's been a couple of like mainstream book news. I've kind yeah. of been rousing the channels and um, book hype have a lot of niche stuff and like young adult news. Um, but there was big news uh there's going to be another bridget jones book and it's been years since the last one apparently um but this is I, it's a spoiler but it's not a spoiler because this is basically the well this is the announcement yeah of the book, this so... is the blurb of the book yeah so <laughs> prepare for a shock mr darcy is dead this is set years later mr darcy is dead she is now a widower with two children and it, she has a 30 year old boy toy it, uh, is that even the same series yes you've got the same characters in it but if you take away everything about i don't hmm, i don't but know it's, she's got the she's got the boy toy so i assume that even though it's years later and she's got other things to deal with she'll still have that uh search for romance you know a search for happiness so it's at a point where she feels like she should already be there with, you know, happy for life, happily married, but it's, it's something not. terrible, you know, tragedies happen, so she's got to start again, which is something but, that happens. You know? Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, I can definitely see that that's actually being quite true to life, you know. Mm. On the other hand, I, in case you've not picked up on this from the kind of uh, awesome fairy tale stuff I read, books for escapism for me. 
And yeah. I like to feel that when I close the book, when I put that aside, my character's in there that I've really cared about for the last, like, <laughs> you know, however long that I've been reading the book. I like to hope they just kind of have their happily ever after. That's true. Yeah, because Bridget Jones was... It was the book that... I admit I've not read it, but I've seen the films. Yeah, I've everyone's seen the films. the films. It was on the other night, and Jack gave me the the evil eyes and I said I'm a woman I'm allowed yeah I'm allowed sure. Bridget Jones <laughs> even though I'm the most tomboyish girl ever even I am it doesn't Bridget matter you can, everyone's allowed Bridget Jones <laughs> we the, all had those moments the fun about Bridget Jones was that you watched her eat ice cream you were like yes she's like me she's a bit chubby uh, she's you know she's unlucky. not got everything together yeah, she's you know but you like the fact that by the end she's happy it's happily ever ever after yeah so yeah i kind of see the point and it it takes it away and then also uh, i mean i could be wrong i've not read the bridget jones series but my understanding of this would be they therefore killed off darcy off screen as it were we're we're not it's happened in between books am i right in that yeah we i don't i don't think think we'd see the death or anything i don't think that's okay I don't think you can really. Can you give your character such a big, a big sort of event, a big sort of plot point like that, and not show it? Is that still no, are we okay th- with this? I think you can. Um, yeah, because it depends on how approach. If it's happened, if we jump in, and this has happened years ago, then she's had enough time to adjust and get used to it. She's still a bit. She could still be sad about oh, it. I, so we'll but see her. I don't. Rise I don't know if that's how it. it will be, but I assumed it was like a bit in, enough of a gap. Because otherwise, that would be in. the most depressing thing yeah. ever. So, yeah. yeah, no, you're probably right with that. Yeah. So I think if you take it from that angle, she's where she's kind of almost comfortable again with that being how it is. I mean, it says she's got a boy toy, so obviously she's. It's not like it was yesterday. Yeah, so she's passed it enough to be moving on and doing the whole... And what she'll have kids. Then? I don't know how old the kids will be, but yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. It's definitely not going to be the same. It makes but... me sad. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I don't know, I just... Yeah, I think it really is just I like I like to think that that, that happy ending will stick for a character, and I guess... Yeah. I, th- I, I suspect there might be a few people who just... I think it's too different and we'll leave it i mean i don't know again obviously we're judging it on yeah. on uh, like a tiny press release here i yeah. mean maybe maybe it will actually work maybe we'll look back eventually and be like wow that was definitely the right decision to to to, to take the character in that direction but yeah. right now it just seems a little bit mean yeah. to bridget <laughs> well we'll we'll see um the next news was i wanted to bring it up just because it's relevant to what we talked about last week John Barrowman. John Barrowman. John Barrowman has written a Torchwood book with his sister. Just, I, you can, you can, any sentence really that you follow up John Barrowman, insert rest of sentence. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, tell me more. I didn't know he, he had writing skills. I, I've seen him in, in musical theatre. He's been excellent. I've seen him in the Phantom of the Opera even, being somewhat serious. Um, but he didn't write those. Well, no, but he did, you know... You, you're He's assuming his flair will come through the page. <laughs> well, no, because I've, I've seen... I've, I don't know. I've, I've seen more sides to him than just yeah. the awesomeness that is Captain mm. Jack. But um, I'd be interested. I mean, this is a, his career is still based around, you know, words. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe... I don't, I, don't, I don't think it works that way. <laughs> Well, I don't know what her sister does either. I mean, maybe she actually... Maybe she's just carried him and she's maybe just gone. She is. Maybe it's like... Maybe Put your he's... name on it and we can sell it. Okay. Because on the one hand, who's going to know certain members of the Torchwood character sort of universe better than the actor yeah, who he, plays him, you know? To be fair to him, he is like really passionate about the series. Yeah. He's someone who could be that character forever. Like, I think... He I was, think he cares. He really was quite cares. upset that he wasn't coming back for the 50th. As was, he was I. Yeah, he was assuming that he was coming back. And when he found out he wasn't, he was... I think he was quite hurt, to be honest. It's a, it is a shame, because <laughs> yeah. when you look at 
what's been done since the um well since the revival really mm. he's he's been in a lot of those series you know and he's had the tortured spin-off it is actually yeah. to me it is a shame not to bring him back because mm. i mean i mean what david tennant was the doctor for five years four years or five years something like that yeah well four wasn't five. wasn't jack around yeah. for longer well see i'm a bit more brutal because i think story comes first I, I don't want to shove a character of if he wasn't supposed to be in the story in the first place. If if Stephen Moffat has a really good story in mind, then stick with it. Don't put characters in for the sake of it. That is true. Yeah. That is, no, that is, I can't. I don't disagree with that. But my sentimental side yeah. says this is a celebration. Yeah. It's an anniversary yeah. celebration. Should there not be just a little a little yeah. bit of basically saying, you know, yeah. I mean. It's it's a sh- it's really a shame about um, Liz Sladen as well because if mm. she hadn't passed away, I feel like perhaps um. it would have been lovely to see her involved. So I don't think she would. This t- yeah. Russell T Davis and Stephen Moffat are two very different creatures. Oh, yeah. Russell T Davis <laughs> was perfectly happy to do the bring everyone bring back well, in. We, we saw it yeah, in the finale, yeah. didn't we? They yeah, had we had everybody. that. Everybody. I don't think it was like amazing writing to have them all together. But he did it well enough. He pulled it off. There but, was something very fun about seeing yeah. everybody in the TARDIS. Yeah. So but equally, we have yeah. seen that now. Yeah. And Stephen Moffat is story first. So we're going to get a bit of something different from him. And he's bringing back Ten, Anne Rose, David yeah, Tennant, see, I, and Billy Piper. And I, I can't be so mad. <laughs> I, 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 do you know what? I, Give me just the smallest hint that those two did actually get together, and I, I will be happy. You could, you could pretty much do anything else with the rest of that episode, but if those two get a happy ending, <laughs> finally get a happy ending, even if it's the one who regenerated from the hand, so it's not technically the Doctor, but it's his clone, so it's kind of the same thing. I'll oh my God! Happy. If it's Doctor Dogger and not actually Ten. Oh no! What if it's not? What? <gasps> Oh, I don't even know what to hope for. That would be so fun, though, to be fair. (laughs) Okay. I think we've um, digressed. I was going to say, I think let's uh, move on before this turns into the Doctor Who cast. Um, But I like the idea of um, an actor at least somehow having, having a chance to write something for his canon. That's, that's kind of interesting. You don't get that all the time. Is See, that is passion to me. That he's kind of gone. Well, if no one else is making a TV series, and I'll, I'll write, you know, I'll write one. Yeah. You know, I'll make this happen. I think he's the kind of person who'd start a Kickstarter if he thought it yeah. would get like a tortured film. Probably would. Let's yeah. face it. Let's, the fan base is there. Yeah. Let's get him on Twitter. So just... Yeah, we'll be like, hey, John. <laughs> Do you want to sound not that bothered about it? <laughs> well, the last one was. Mm. The last one. It. it... <laughs> I don't know, Torchwood Torchwood got quite depressing and I think that probably the most cheerful thing about Torchwood might be John Barrowman. Yeah. So I don't know, I'd like to see what he does with it. I'm 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 open to this. You know, this is interesting <laughs> to me, so we'll see. Uh, also in the news there's gonna be another chronicle of Narnia film, The Silver Chair. I have no idea which one this is. I uh, I don't think I read of, past yeah that's line out of the realm of my knowledge. I don't know. I know there's yeah. also is it is it a horse and his boy is one of the that sounds right. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. I think I'm right in saying that the these adaptations they're doing for Narnia mm. are probably the most drawn out in terms of time scale. It's quite. It's quite yeah. rare that suddenly after a few years they're going, actually, yeah, we are doing yeah, the next when film. When did the first one came out? Um, the first one was, oh my gosh, ages years ago. Wasn't it round about when they were starting off like the Harry Potter franchise? Well, maybe not that no, far back. No, but no, no, like, it's a lot more recent than that. But Harry Potter was still going. I it think. was It was a while yeah. back, definitely. Like, I, it's, it's yeah. not been a very speedy adaption. But in terms of like the actual, um, the even basically just just like the sets and the CG and everything about the films when they've actually come to fruition, when you see the finished product, mm. 
they do look brilliant. It's like they they're really, pretty. really yeah. being worked on in that in that interim time. But my thoughts on the first one were like, I was happy with it right up until the end. Um, I thought it was like perfect, nice enchanting children's tale. Yeah. And then right at the end, there's the big battle, and I just didn't feel like it was earned. I don't know if that's because now we're used to having, you know, Lord of the Rings, where you have three three-hour films. And you get the payoff after like years of waiting. So I think it felt too quick, but I don't know if that's now because I'm so used to these longer films. I think, um, well, I, I think it's hard because I guess the real pull of Narnia with me was just I just wanted to explore it, I wanted mm. to see it. And like that first bit where Lucy's she finds the lamppost, yeah. and obviously, like Mr. Mr. Tumnus, yeah. it, it's just so magical that I yeah. basically could have spent twice as long in that bit of the movie. I, I really didn't mind about the plot so much because I was <laughs> I was really happy just to watch it ticking over and see and just see what, what was around the next corner and you yeah. know which characters we were going to meet. And I just um I guess it's almost like when the plot kicks in in that sense when you do yeah. get up to that climactic final battle, I'm I'm not interested in that really because yeah, I think that means it's... the film's ending. Yeah. I don't really want to know. I'd, I'd much rather go back to like, you know, the 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 otter's house or <laughs> the bit where you sort of meet Father Christmas who yeah. comes a bit out of nowhere and yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm I'm sure it'll be great. Did you see the second one? Um, I did see the second one uh, where they had the whole random. Um, they they deviated a bit from the book there, and I think. Oh, okay. Because, it, well, they put in, like, a romance plot, which was not... Oh. And it was a bit, like, odd. Oh, I, I hate guess, that. Yeah. I hate that. I was a bit, like... <laughs> There's enough really? romance stories. We don't need That's more. That's not what Narnia is. No. Um, the one thing I find hard about the series is the same, really, sort of the same issue I have with his dark materials, is that mm. the characters, they grow up. And so mm. you do reach this point where they're not... They can't go back now yeah. to Narnia and you lose oh. them um, and obviously this is before getting towards the end where there's I, I believe it's kind of like a, a thinly veiled metaphor whereby Narnia kind of becomes heaven for the, the, the family and yeah it, anyway but <laughs> but characters um, get locked out almost of Narnia because oh. they grow up too much they can't come back so you get like Edmund and Lucy come back when Peter and Susan don't because they've grown up too much by that point. Oh, and it's, that sounds sad. Yeah, to me, oh. to me it's sad. I don't want... It's the same thing. I guess I'm talking about the same topic. It's, yeah. I'd like to close that book and just imagine yeah. that they all, they all, you know, had a brilliant time as, as kings and queens of Narnia mm. and and they're still there. They're still yeah. going. And, you know, that's, that's great because you've seen the hardship and then you come back to the next book and that's not the case. And, you know, mm. yeah, so... Oh. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the big, big news of this week is that Tom Clancy uh, passed away. First of October. Um, very sad. He's been a huge name in books for years. Uh, books we haven't read. Because no, it's, it's, it's books, books for men. And, <laughs> but I have to say, I was surprised to find that when I looked at the listing, I have heard of a lot of the titles, and yeah. I did know the name when you know. It's when... because you know you're guaranteed guaranteed to see his name on a book in Wadstones if you're yeah. in an airport, wherever. I don't think you could go into a shop and not find a book by him find somewhere. Some fancy, yeah. And his stories have turned into video games, you know, there's like whole franchises. Um, it's, you know, he's worth millions. And yes. Yeah, so it's it's very sad. Um, I feel but, as though perhaps I should have read his, I like read his books now. It, it, <laughs> I mean, I, it makes me feel uninformed when when you realise and like pulling up the list on Wikipedia of all these books and thinking, yes, I've heard of that one, I've heard of that one, I've heard of that, and then I think, well, it's almost a shame mm. not to have actually. It's it's the kind of genre though where unless someone specifically said, look, read this one, it's amazing, I wouldn't because I just know it's not for me. Yes, yeah. it's, it's that soldier, tough man kind of kind story. Of, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it, I guess yeah. it's one of those. If it's your thing, yeah. he's probably the go-to guy. Yeah. 
you know, he's like practically writing Call of Duty books. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Um, but it made me think of a good question that I want to ask. Okay. Uh, when was the last time you read a book outside of your comfort zone? The last time, I think, probably was when I got talked into reading Fifty Shades of Grey, which, <laughs> despite me admitting to you I'm reading Mary Gentry at the moment, it ticks none of the literary boxes that I would look for. It, Nothing about it really appealed to me, but I was told yeah. to read it. And before that, I would say it was Catch-22, which was recommended to me by awesome. Chris. Yeah. And I I really, I would honestly say I had to kind of slog my way through mm. because it's very clever. Yeah. <laughs> and I tend to read last <laughs> thing at night. And I don't know, I read, I read yeah. because um, I find it relaxing usually. I, yeah. I just like, I like it. I like to see what's happening with the story. And I think, I mean, Catch-22 is a it's set obviously during during a war and the whole mm. premise is that it's like um everything in there are so many catch 22s in it shockingly <laughs> given that that's the title um i found that i really was having to pay a lot more attention um which is not really a bad thing it's yeah. more just different from what i normally would read and i don't normally yeah. do that whole war genre and yeah, yeah it was there are weird. some books that you have to read in the middle of the day you have to set time aside for because you go right when you're a, awake if it's sit concentrate and think about this yeah and and they can be really re rewarding but it does tend to mean that sometimes you can't read them when you're going to bed yeah. <laughs> which is like best time to read books which so is a shame. what about you what was the last um, thing you i think it was 1984 like is again another classic Big brother yeah book? it's the george orwell one um it's basically because i realized that my book actually had a lot of dystopian themes. I'd kind of not really spotted it there, that it was there. It's very strange to not see it in your own work. but So I kind of went, well... Is this the Darwin yeah, decision one? So yeah, I'm with you. I kind of thought I have to see the ultimate dystopian book. It's a classic. Um, it's very... Uh, it's very depressing. Um, and it gets more so as it goes on. It's very claustrophobic because the characters are very stuck in the way that they act and they can only be a certain way, they have to live a certain way and they have uh, what's called like tele screens with cameras that cause, and when you realise how far back this was written, I think this was written in like the 40s or 50s yeah. and he's talking about TVs that can watch you and you're like, it's worryingly you're so, pathetic you're almost. so ahead of your time and you know they'll get alarms telling them to get out of bed if they're not there on time and they raise suspicion and if you raise so much suspicion then that's it you're taken away and you're erased from history here. and is this this is also where room 101 came from is yes. it as well yes it's this idea of your like the ultimate punishment you're put in a room with your worst fear Oh my to gosh. extract the thing is it's, I don't even think it was to extract information it's almost just to kind of maintain this kind of balance that they've created it's yeah it's worth a read it's can be hard going um, but it's yeah so it's defi it definitely <laughs> is um, uh, it's, it's the sort of it's the classic like you said yeah. of, of the genre I suppose yeah. if you're going dystopian that, that is the go to yeah. But, and I think they're the kind of books to read then if unless someone explicitly write, recommends something it's the classic you've got to go for so like I, I tried uh, I started reading Sherlock and yeah. it was for that reason it's not I don't read detective stuff um, I don't read classics that often but I gave it a go and I really enjoyed it um, yeah. it's something I keep coming back to because I've got the collection so I'm like about halfway through reading the entire collection so I can pop back in and read a bit more and then go off and read something else and I did a similar thing with um, Dracula when I realised I've, I've read so many vampire books I really should read <laughs> the vampire book you yeah. know? and so really, I suppose eventually you do yeah. there are certain books that when you're reading within a genre you think actually you know what, it's time I should go to yeah. that, that first one, it's 
And it's always great because it's just never quite how you imagine it's going to be. It's the first, the original. Yeah. And so it's always interesting to see. Definitely. Yeah. Um, right, and now we're going to move on to talk about Divergent, which is our book club book. It is. Um, if you've not read it or you don't want to be spoiled, I'd suggest probably leaving now yeah, because probably. we're gonna we're gonna go into detail. We're gonna yeah. talk the ending, everything. <laughs> so yeah, bye. Yeah. If you've uh, goodbye, <laughs> and if, if you're still with us, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Hi. Um, let's start off with Tris. Um, good place to start. Is she a good heroine? What do we think? I think that um, she is in a lot of ways mm. really. Um, a really good good character um mm. i i enjoyed her i have to say i enjoyed the world the world sort of through her eyes um and i liked the fact that her character development didn't take too long to start kicking in mm. um because there are there are some sort of um heroines I guess who are or I suppose more accurately female protagonists who just kind of they don't they just kind of wait and the plot happens yeah. to them and at least she was she was a lot more active yeah yeah my like my biggest note with Tris my, was I think I, I mentioned this to you is that um I don't feel like you see enough joy in her as she's going through the course of the book yeah I don't yeah. I, I feel like a lot of her development comes from the fact that she 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 makes a change in her life. She mm. she she switches from abnegation to dauntless, yeah. and it's commented quite a few times that she's trying new things. She's having these new experiences, yeah. even just for fun throwaway moments where they mention she's never had a burger before. Yeah, and I was thinking, well, tell me about it. <laughs> did, did you like it? Did, is this a good thing? Are you enjoying it? Are you happy? now like yeah because it's told in first person so there's no reason why we couldn't have had that yeah um i mean one excuse could be to say that the reason for that is because of the setting so she's jumped from she's finally free of the of where she was um and then gone to where she wants to be but then discovers that that's even harder and even tougher but I still, yeah, I do kind of agree with you. I think yeah. we could have had, a, you know, a moment of her enjoying her time there and being happy to be free of where she was. And, you know, a, a bit like, you know, Harry Potter, you're, you're in somewhere new, it's a bit scary, but you're but also it's amazed. Brilliant, you it's know. new, it's... Yeah. Because uh, I think you see her change, you see her mm. develop. I mean, you, at the start of the book, there's a... The thing that really stuck with me... I, I, the thing that really stuck with me about her is, is like I think it's literally the first line when she's mm. saying there's like there's only one mirror in the house and she only yeah. looks at herself once every it's like three, three months. months yeah something like that I mean what does that do to your personality yeah. because I mean there's a big I, I, a big factor I think to, about how you feel about yourself is mm. how you think other people see you that, yeah. that it makes a big impact okay which is why mm. like makeovers are really good at, at changing mm. the way people uh, feel about themselves because yeah. they change the way people are going to see them and in a sense it is a makeover story for Tris you know mm. we see her start out and then we see her go over to to Dauntless and she makes mm. starts to make changes about her herself you know she's changing her outfits she starts getting tattoos she starts embracing bare mm. norms and like fitting yeah. in with them and you see the way she thinks change. There's a brilliant bit where um, at one point in the book she actually says like, um, I want to, so I will. And like yeah. that's a huge yeah. amount of development yeah. from the girl we met on page one. Yeah. And I think I think that's that's kind of yeah. great. You know, it's great to see her develop so yeah. completely through the book. Um, but I want to know more about the beginning. I, like yeah. she must have been so... Yeah repressed in herself <laughs> oh yeah I'm I just think, fascinated um, I think we should probably like explain the uh, houses yeah, the, the, the houses basically that, yeah okay um, so in this society uh, you're born into a what's it called a 
Is it a faction? A faction, that's it. I feel like it's a faction. Yeah. Um, So you're born into a faction, and each faction represents uh, a part of your personality. So there's a faction that is all about selflessness, which is the one she's born into. So that's why she's not got the mirror, so that she can't think of herself. She can only think about others. Yes, and that's abnegation. Yeah, she's all about giving to others. There's erudite which are all about intelligence and wisdom yes um there's dauntless which is the faction she chooses which is all about bravery and courage we've got Um, amnity which we hear comparatively less about they seem to be they seem to be more farmers kindness i think is the overwhelming trait i got there Kindness, but not self- selfishness. Yeah, not, I might mean, no. have to look back at that. I think it's it's quite specifically yeah. said in the book that there, there isn't crossover between yeah. these. If we're describing two factions to sound the same, we're describing them wrong, yeah. I suppose. And the last one I've got is uh, Candor, which is all about honesty. Yeah. And there's like yeah. no the grey areas. Yeah, they <laughs> speak their mind, whether it's a horrible thing or a good thing. Yeah. They always tell the truth. And I think they yeah. don't. Um, they have no moral grey areas. It's you. It's 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 black and white. It's right or wrong. There's yeah. no ambiguity there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's those solid lines that I struggled with, because essentially the idea is that once you hit sixteen, um, or once we, you hit a certain time of the year, all the sixteen year olds are told to choose which faction they want to be in. Most of them will go to the ones that they're born in because it's what they've grown up knowing. For obvious reasons. Um, and so you choose which faction you want to be in. Uh, you're given a test to help you decide and they'll say what they recommend. And um, we'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but ultimately you can yeah. disregard your test results yeah. if you want yeah. and choose yourself. Um, and but that's not it you have to then pass tests to properly become a part of the faction yes. which is what the whole book's about but the thing i don't get is that you can then become factionless if you fail these tests you become factionless which you're means rejected you're rejected you, i think you're not quite homeless but you practically are because I you're think you're relying that, on handouts then, aren't yeah. you? From p- primarily the abnegation. Yeah. They. You've got a crappy job. You could be starving to get to death. You're abandoned, and it just that didn't make sense to me. None of my biggest criticism of the book is that it just did not make sense. It doesn't. You know, in, in that respect. Talking about 1984, you know that kind of that makes sense the world that they've made that they like this isn't it's a society i can understand i can't imagine it quite happening to that level but i understand it but this i just didn't yeah i don't yeah. understand how this happened so and there's also the fact that they're in a part of america and everything else is destroyed so there's like well, abandoned cities this is, yeah it's this is so the other strange. i have a, i have like a few points yeah. my my <laughs> My first point about this is <laughs> it's very unclear as to why. Yeah. Why has this society emerged? Yeah. Um, it, I found that it was hinted that a lot of the tension between the factions was due to a food, a fresh food shortage. Uh, yeah. It wasn't outright stated yeah. that this was the problem. Um, mm. So I don't really see why. I don't. I think perhaps if we knew why, it might make slightly more sense as to why these particular factions had emerged. Um, but they so don't it, seem particularly suited to yeah. to running a whole society. There's there's things missing. Yeah. Here. <laughs> see if something's happened like nuclear blast or whatever. I'm, I'm not actually too bothered about understanding what happened, but I just don't understand why someone went. Well, the best way to run a society is if we have houses that represent personalities and you have to be the most selfless or the most brave yeah. and there's no room for in-between. It's... Instead of saying something like, <laughs> okay, we're now in a situation where we've got a reduced population, I suppose our first concern is um, getting to a sustainable society. Why don't we start farming things, uh, yeah. making sure we've got maybe like heat, <laughs> we've got water, we've got because there doesn't seem to be any problem at obtaining these things they don't yeah. they don't have trouble with power they've got a, a train running <laughs> throughout the book um 
and it, it just seems a bit odd yeah. um, but then my other point about letting people become factionless is to do with um, divergence mm. because the whole point well not the whole point but effectively if you are divergent it's you will not fit into one of these neat factions oh. so you'll have personality traits from a couple of factions for example mm. and so you don't have that one faction that accepts you where you fit 100 mm. percent. and so i you know following that on without getting yeah. into the plot of the novel that would imply you therefore won't be accepted into a faction because you don't fit it very well yeah so does that not sort of follow that the factionless are kind of in a different way divergent but they're not labeled as that i don't know see like to me when you figure out what divergent is um it's almost as if it's like giving you a pass to rebel and it's the ticket to do whatever you want it's someone going you can fit anywhere you you possibly want to so just choose your favorite <laughs> So rather yeah. than be the opposite, it's you have the power to choose. That's what it was about okay. for me. So that's like the comp- yeah. See, that's so much more optimistic than my interpretation of it. Because <laughs> I was thinking divergence was terrible because it meant you could never completely yeah. assimilate into this new group of norms and yeah. like and and you know internalize their values and. Yeah. So yeah. that's why that's why the dauntless are so feared in the end because not only can they be a part of a faction but they are more than that they can they're the ones who can think outside of the box so while everyone is trapped thinking we have to act a certain way so she continues to carry traits of abnegation she tries to get rid of it to a certain extent doesn't she but it's obviously it sticks with her so that selflessness so she it's all about bravery and fighting but she still wants to do good and help others ultimately in the end because i think that's it it is you do really see her character develop she doesn't Mm. suddenly turn into a new character you see her holding on to and letting go of Mm. traits that she's had in the past and i just Mm. think i i I think it's really brilliantly done because you do you start to see the way the um like the different factions are sort of clashing in her and she's yeah. trying to find that medium between them and obviously at the same time trying to fit mm. to the but um i think as well her brother is a very interesting like talking about the, yeah. the fact that her brother's really interesting because yeah. it starts out and her perception of is it is it caleb is that what's her that brother? sounds right <laughs> yeah um and it starts out, and her opinion of him is that he is the perfect abnegation. Yeah. He's perfect. He's, and I'm and I'm reading this, and I'm thinking that's just creepy. Like yeah. you can't be that. No, no one's that perfect. And then it turns out that he um, he chooses. Is it erudite? He yeah, goes, yeah. He goes for the one that's all about wisdom and books. So yeah. Don't they find the secret stash that he's actually? Because he always locks himself away in his room. And yeah. Like, oh, he must be thinking of new ways to be good, but he's actually reading and... That's it. And then it makes sense because you're yeah. like, of course he was the perfect abnegation because he studied the hell out of it. He yeah. learned how to be. Yeah. And I was like, now that, yeah. I think, is brilliant. I personally, yeah. I really like that. Mm. Because I had... I, Well, I mean, I say I was thinking it's weird that he's so perfect. Mm. I didn't make that jump of logic. I didn't think, oh, therefore he must be from a different... No, it's, it is a it proper twist when it happens. Because you're so focused on her and she's like... Because basically when someone leaves their family... Because once you move to a different faction, you're basically leaving your family behind. Yeah. And it's frowned upon. There's already people in abnegation who have uh, lost... Like, there's one in particular who's lost his kid. and um, Yeah. And he's kind of... He's, he's not criti- recovered. He's criticised for it by some people because yeah. they go, oh, he must have been a really terrible dad because his kid left. And so she's worried that people will think that about her family. And bearing in mind as well that abnegation are the sole... I mean, they have a council, it's not yeah. one person, but they're the ones who are in control of the whole society. Yeah. This, almost like... It's almost a vote of no confidence that his mm. son left him. Mm. 
it it changes the way he's viewed in the society and yeah. that's it's worrying you know yeah. from that point of view because he's one of i think 50 people who are sort of controlling it so yeah. it's mm-hmm. yeah i mean this changing changing your faction is is a, is a really big statement it's yeah not... it's a really big but especially in abdication yeah. because it's all about kindness and helping each other and mo i think the, it's you kind of get the feeling that the other factions move around a bit more yes than abdication do and abdication kind of stays I feel like there, if it was on a like a continuum, if it mm. if it was if it was a spectrum from yeah. it would go from abnegation yeah. to dauntless. Yeah. Like they are yeah. they are the the more opposite. Yeah. So yeah, it was a a big shock when he announced it, and you kind of think, oh god. So now the parents are just on their own, and yeah. and the dad doesn't handle it well, does he? He doesn't go to visit anyone. He's which is norm. We're told yeah. is normal. Yeah. And but. like, and her mother calls her out on it, and her mum. Yeah, arc. so there's, and then she realizes that her mum is basically is, the most badass person in the book. Like, let's just... yeah. And then uh, it's the first time she starts to think, well, hold on, were my parents born in abdication, yeah. or did they choose it? And you find out her mother chose it, and it's yes. a very strange revelation. But um, it's very. Um... I think the hints are there. I think as soon mm. as her mother came to visit her, um, it was very well set up. I think yeah. that finding out like that yeah. her, her mother yeah. had actually originally been yeah. from Dauntless yeah. and had gone to Abnegation, then you've got Triss doing the yeah. same thing backwards. It's yeah. neat. See, when you think about that, um, with Dauntless, I feel like there should be more people who are Dauntless. <laughs> Because yeah. there are you all you get the sense with everyone if they've come from another faction that they're still holding on to it. There are the characters that have come from um, which one was it? Candor, who tell the truth. Yes. Yeah, and so they're always they have that honesty built into them, and they don't quite get rid of it. So yeah. they always speak their minds. So there are these people who are a mix, and so it seems strange that I'm not sure where that line yeah, is between. It's, it's, Development, holding yeah. on to your past, and actual divergence. Yeah, it's in terms it's, of how you could yeah. recognize it in another, yeah. because it, yeah, yeah. It, it does seem it's obviously. I mean, it, it seems to come out in the testing that seem, but equally, yeah. you've got people suspecting that Triss is divergent based on mm. her personality. I mean, Thor in particular mm. seems to suspect this very early on, yeah. and. I don't think he's seen her tests at that point. No, I don't think I don't think he has because he wouldn't see the first test and mm. yeah. So I mean, there's there's obviously an art to to spot yeah. it. <laughs> um, when you found out what divergent was, yes, were you were you disappointed or were you surprised? Were you satisfied? Um. Was that a satisfactory explanation? Because basically you don't know what divergent is for most of the book it's it's treated as someone who's special you're one of a kind but you have to keep it hush hush because it's bad someone's gonna find out and if they find out you're divergent something bad's gonna happen to you i still don't really feel like i properly understood what it was because i Mm. was thinking okay this is something to do with her personality fair enough Mm. this is something about her as a person the way she thinks the way she's developed her personality Mm. i'm like i'm okay i'm with you Mm. and then we get to the very end of the book and it turns out by being divergent she is granted immunity to an injection and i'm like so this is something physical oh yeah i'd forgotten about that so yeah so i don't (laughs) And then I'm I like, wonder if there's more to learn then. Yeah, the that's my thinking. Yeah. Because either there's more to learn or yeah. I've just made an assumption that is not accurate about yeah. what divergence was. So I I feel don't like know. it's now that like we've got to the end of the book. Like throughout the book you don't know and I'm kind of always having the back of my head because I like fantasy. It's like, is this gonna be a magical thing? Yeah. Is it gonna be or a sci- but I think it might possibly go in the direction of sci-fi and there is something different yeah. about her. Well, we seem to see it manifest in that she can affect, when she's being tested 
she mm. seems to a know she's being tested and yeah. and b be able to affect it's basically a dream that, that she's in and she's able mm. to sort of take control over it she can she can change that environment mm. and we see that that is because she's divergent yeah so yeah that's obviously going on so there's obviously something yeah. to do with her mind yeah that's true but again there's obviously some sort of physical mm. aspect because how else would you be immune to something unless mm. that can't be meant you can't be you can't think yourself immune that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true yeah so i assume there's more to learn then i should yeah i, I actually should point about out that. actually i've been uh making an effort not to read up really on this mm. online i've not looked at the sequel i've not really looked at what's being discussed by other fans because i didn't yeah. want to answer my own questions here. yeah yeah you're uh, coming yeah yeah because the third or fourth book is on the way out i can't remember it's, which because so, insurgent is next yeah. i think and then oh no yeah there's definitely a third one yeah um so just wondering I'm not sure if it's a trilogy it then or whether it's ongoing so um, I feel like it's the kind of series that would answer I feel you like, yeah. I feel like she wouldn't drag it on I hope she wouldn't actually because if she hasn't entered this then it has the chance to be a very well rounded you know solid series I feel like it's a trilogy but yeah. I don't know if that's just because it's young adults and, yeah. and therefore it, it must be a trilogy because they all are <laughs> Well, no, there's a lot of long-running series yeah. where they could easily end it and then go, ah, no, 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 let's go. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about four. We haven't <laughs> mentioned four yet. Oh, four. <laughs> so four is her teacher um, for a lot of the book. Yeah. And he's the badass. But everyone's badass in Divergent, but he's the nice. He's particularly he's, badass. He's the nice badass one. <laughs> And they get each other yeah. from very early on. Yeah. They literally I think they just have like a moment where he mm. laughs or smiles at a yeah. joke she makes on like the first time they meet and I'm like, oh, pairing. Okay, yeah. that's what we're shipping. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It takes like about halfway through the book to get there, I think. I think it, yeah. Yeah. Quite a chunk through the book before they finally get together. And the well, well, we'll get to yeah, yeah we'll talk about four yeah. <laughs> I'll get I'll get to this. Um his character, yeah, I quite liked his. He was quite enjoyable, and you feel like he's got a brain in in that head of his. I. <laughs> he's quite cool. Yeah, I thought his. Um, when you found out more about his past, you find out yeah. his backstory. Um, yeah. I liked what they did there. I thought we really could have used seeing what he does when he's not teaching Triss's group. I yeah, think there's about nice. one scene and you see him and he's getting drunk with his friends. Yeah. And, and you don't even hear what unusual. they're saying. And yeah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, <laughs> okay, tell me more about this. Yeah. What, what is this guy's life? Yeah. What what does that's, he do? But that's what it's like uh, for seeing your teachers. You only see them in that environment. Yeah, of course. But then you see them out of the belt and you're like, whoa, whoa. You, you don't shop, do you? <laughs> but having <laughs> having set up yeah. Chris's intention to, yeah. you know, at least pursue as far mm. as she can these these feelings she's having for four, like mm. we want to cross that divide. We want to see him outside of that environment. And yes, this is book one. Maybe this is explored mm. in book two. Maybe maybe we go more into this in Insurgent. Mm. Maybe we find out a lot more about the rest of four's life. Mm. But at the moment, that really felt like it was lacking to me. It was like no, he's right. just put into a drawer when he's not teaching her. <laughs> and then he just pops up again. He um, just goes outside and sits on the ledge and broods. And I feel like he the, would brood. Looks at the darkened sky. Yeah. And he gets, like, syringes and runs through his fear escape, <laughs> again, like, endlessly. Yeah. His, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my big <laughs> concern about four was the point in the book where they drop in the fact that he's 18. Yeah. I'm older makes... than 18. <laughs> yeah, but it makes more sense that it's not a creeper looking at a 16-year-old. <laughs> no, but that makes me a creeper <laughs> reading it and thinking, oh, he's a badass, I like him. And then being like, wait, no, I don't, he's a child. Like, okay, he's not a child, technically, yeah. but... Uh, it... But in the film, they've made him... 
20 it, it made it okay this isn't a discussion um, about the film but i just wanted to mention that quickly it's yeah they've it's aged quite, him up a bit in the film it's quite strange and he looks older i think he looks older even than the age he's playing which makes it that could possibly Although, that um, might ruin the film it looks like it's going to be a good film so far from the small bits i've seen but yeah i mean if, i've only seen the, the stills to be yeah. honest with you i've not actually seen any i don't know is there a is there a teaser out is there a trailer on it or just uh, yes okay, i think well. so i think i've seen a trailer okay yeah, well i have a very I short trailer seen that but um that if they ruin that romance then i think that could harm the book not ruin it because it's more than the romance i mean i must yeah. say this for a, a young adult book this is one of the few romances I've actually quite enjoyed. Um, I've said it before, I'm not huge on romance. I'll enjoy it from time to time. Um, so sometimes when they do, like a Sandra Claire, when you do the whole uh, love triangle, it's... Which, can I briefly point oh. out, my <laughs> huge, huge praise for this book that I was going to mention before is mm. um, I did not see a love triangle in there. No, it's There's... just... It's straightforward. It's there is a character who has a bit sense. of a crush on Tris, yeah. and she just says, "Nope, Look, not really interested." Off. And that's yeah. okay then. It's yeah. dropped. We move on. Yeah. It just thank you. And you know what? That's actually really um, well handled um, because it, you know a phrase that I've started to hate more and more is the friend zone f- uh, phrase because it's very one sided. If you're a girl and a guy isn't interested in you, there's no name for it. We get over it. But if you're a yeah. guy and, you, and you're you're friend zoned, oh, you put me in the yeah, book. and you're like, but Whoa. he, but this guy that she ultimately rejects, they've been friends up until that point. They've been very good, close friends. Yes. Um, and she's almost it's been like semi protective of him, and her abnegation side has felt the need to comfort him because he's struggled more than anyone else. So you can see almost why yeah. he's. Yeah. Why he's reading yeah. into that, even though you also see yeah. why she meant nothing by it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but he then, once he's rejected, he's then dragged into this the, the bad group. Yeah. And they attack her for the drama. And, and it ultimately ends in him uh, getting killed because they're by the um, chasm to the river, aren't they? It that's, doesn't that's Thor how... save her as well. It neatly sets yeah. up a bit of a rescue there by Thor. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty awesome. So that's... Now that I think about it, that's quite a cool inclusion to have this... She's had someone go, oh, you know, I fancy you. No, it's okay. And then that's not been enough. He's come in yeah. and attacked her. Whereas Thor is very respectful of her and is actually quite a good boyfriend. In the and it, it makes <laughs> a lot of... Particularly once we find out yeah. Thor... Um, which can I just say, for as right, okay, just taking out the actual character. If I offered you a choice between two guys, and one of them was called Four, <laughs> and one of them was called Tobias, who's hotter, Emma? Who's the hot one out of Four and Tobias? <laughs> Tobias is a pretty stupid name, but yeah, Tobias because it's a name. <laughs> but the reason why he's called Four is. It's very satisfying. It um, is, actually. Because one of the final tests they're put under is it's one of these kind of dream fear escape things. Yeah. So they have to deal with their biggest fears one by one. And the reason why he's called four is because he only has four fears and it's the smallest number that anyone's had. I so believe it's around... Is it 10 to 15 that's normal? It's probably something. Yeah, it's quite a it's large a lot. number. It's a big number. So when they go through the, they go through a like a pick ordeal. So it's one fear after the other that they have to smash through, and deal with. Um, it's oh, quite. Yeah. It's quite a satisfying kind of. It's a. Re- it's a good and it makes test. sense in universe as <laughs> yeah. to why that would yeah. have been um, held on to. Yeah. But that also really makes me wonder, what did he name himself? Was he going by Tobias before they called him Thor? Or did he give himself a new name? Because Tris did. Question mark. Mm. Um, but the other... the I mean, are we... I don't know. Are we going to circle back to the, the fear thing? Because one, one of the things I really, really liked <laughs> about Tris's fears mm. was that she's afraid of the relationship that's developing... Be- well, yeah, and I... 
it's yeah that's a very honest fear because yeah. your first before you've had that first time yeah it's terrifying <laughs> you know it's if especially because she's come from abnegation it's actually it's, set up yeah. that she would know nothing about relationships. Yeah. I mean, not she, even just the physical stuff, like, like yeah. nothing about relationships. Yeah. I mean, this is a faction where people don't really hold hands. They don't outwardly show a lot of affection. They're very grey, boring almost. In fact, I think there's a comment in at the start where she takes off her jacket and she's wearing a t-shirt and presumably trousers or mm. a, you know like a floor length skirt or something she's very covered up still yeah. and she says that's the most skin she's ever had on display in public yeah. and th- just that that complete absence of yeah. like even education or, or just yeah. the you know understanding what can happen when mm. you 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 know fall for someone yeah it I just love the fact that it, that was included as one of her fears because I yeah. think if if people are honest, yeah. particularly at sixteen, yeah. that would have been one of mine. Yeah. Like that's probably still like relationships terrify me. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> um, so because like, it's it's not even the fear of being attacked. No, sexually. it's just it's, the fear of the first time. Yeah. It's very honest. And very it real. is. Like, it yeah. is. And, yeah. It's so refreshing to yeah. not get a wonderful, godlike, perfect yeah. first time. Just yeah. you know, or even because a lot of the time in young adult books, it's either the most amazing, mind blowing experience <laughs> yeah. in the world ever, or it's completely skated past yeah. and they've seen it out, yeah. and you're like, which part of that was supposed yeah. to resemble real life? Yeah. <laughs> like, I do mean, they, do they do it? In, in not the, in this I book. No, I can't remember. No, they no. don't do it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah. so again, even further justified, she doesn't know yet. She she doesn't know what it's going to yeah. be like. So of course, and like the thing that also gets me that I thought was very true is that she's kind of oh, it's implied that um, this makes the examiners laugh that 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 yeah. she's laughed at for not yeah. being confident sexually, and I'm like, I think that's a really true of our society, but yeah. equally yeah. probably really true of a lot of people that they yeah. probably are afraid of this i mean until until you go through it until yeah. until it happens for you for the first time you're not going to know what it's like yeah. I mean, how could you <laughs> so yeah I, I, yeah I really thought that was brave to yeah. have that properly in the book yeah um sorry that's a massive that's... speech <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine <laughs> um i've kind of we've Gone out of order of my notes. Sorry. But that's fine. No, it's a good discussion. <laughs> um, the other topic I wanted to bring up, which is now nothing to do with. with that's anything, fine. That's fine. But it's um, basically this is written in present tense. It is. I'm first person. The present tense is really unusual. You don't get many books that are written in present tense. It's so it's written in the style of I did this. That is I, true. I walked. I not even I walked. I walk up to the podium. Someone says this, and I, and you know, I, I see walk him up. walking. Yeah, there. but you once you start reading it, you almost forget that it is. I found in abnegation that seems perhaps a bit odd. Doesn't bother mm. me because I, I'm I'm not bothered by first person. I know a lot of people yeah. hate it. Apparently. Uh, I quite like first person but when you get up to Dauntless once you get Triss involved in fights I found the first person and the sort of immediate present tense works very well because it is happening quickly and you know I I found then giving you that (laughs) lol blow by blow um, (laughs) of the fight actually made it clearer to me um than, than I guess than, than doing a more of a sort of looking back moment yeah see when I first started reading it this was another kind of thing that made me really cynical towards it because my only other experience with present tense was reading the first chapter to someone's book that they were writing this isn't a published book this is someone I'd offered to do a uh, like manuscript swap did I read this you did I know it is <laughs> yes. it was uh, 
it was really terrible. Well, no, what they're I, not going to know yeah. who they are. What I I'm think say, it was, but... was that it was not the final draft. That was maybe... Yeah. That, yeah. that needed, like, a good three but more drafts I don't, on I it. don't think they liked my criticisms, because I didn't hear from them after. That's fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's, it's very hard to get a grip on, and for a reader to get into. So... The fact that Veronica Ross did a really good job of it, you know, is, you know... Because I also find, I don't know if you've of. tried ever, um, I find it really hard to write. Because <laughs> you can only put information, this sounds so stupid, but you can yeah. only put information into a scene that that character is aware of. And that You is, mean first person rather than present tense? Yeah. Sorry, if I jump, we want about yeah, present. Oh my about, god, sorry. I'm talking about present time. <laughs> you can See, tell first, it's late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Go back to your point. <laughs> so present tense is this just is happening. This is happening ones, now. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Because first person is fine. Yeah, I can get into first person, um, but present tense is just a whole other thing. Um, I don't. You can have present tense without first person, but they do tend to go together as far as I'm aware. So it's, this is happening to me now. Yeah. I do this. I'm and trying then to think of happening. other examples. Apparently Hunger Games was. Yeah, Hunger Games yeah. was. Uh, because yeah. that was, I mean, we made that point about how yeah. it was good in the uh, adaptation, how it yeah. would, it took you out of that perspective. It, it, yeah. you know, it showed you yeah. more of... But um, I wonder if it's something more... It almost seems like it might be more prevalent in sort of children's books, but I I have nothing to back that up. That's literally a gut instinct no, of mine. Present tense or first person? I'm gonna say both. <laughs> Either. <laughs> just to be on the same time. Um, yeah, just so I don't um, embarrass myself again. See the whenever I think of first person, the book that stands out to me is the Vesuvius Club. Uh, I think I mentioned this. Yes. Two episodes back. I will be reading this. Um, because it just starts out with. My name is Lucifer Box. I live on number 11 Downing Street. Yeah. Well, someone has to live there. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just sentence. like, straight away, you get the grasp of who that character is, how they act about themselves, and it's just the perfect book for first person. Although, it, yeah, because having said that, um, I'm just I'm just looking... Yeah, okay, the, the first sentence of Divergent is, there is one mirror in my house. It's behind a sliding panel in the hallway upstairs. Doesn't tell me much about Triss, comparatively. No, no. Given given that, you know, given that we instantly get his sense of humour in two sentences yeah. or less there. I mean, it's, it starts to set up her world very nicely, don't yeah. get me wrong. But it doesn't tell me about Triss. Like, yeah. is she happy that there's one mirror? Is she sad? Does yeah, it matter to her? Yeah, that's true. I don't feel like we go... We get a sense of her character arc, but... I don't think we get inside her head enough. Yeah. Possibly. But the thing is with uh, Vesuvius Club, it's very... Um, it suits the genre because he's writing it as if these are his memoirs that someone will find. So he's... It's first person, but he's also the narrator. Yeah. Which is a very different style. It's still first person, but it's a completely different style. Yeah. So it's, yes, I am the world-famous Lucifer Fox. You will find this one day and you will read my adventures. Aren't these amazing? <laughs> Whereas I think... I mean, I, I do... Start, I Personally, I found that because of the more actiony mostly the ending I mean well no the middle as well but mostly the ending when it when mm. things are um I, I found that worked quite nicely with the, the the present tense first person sort of point of view there because mm. it was more actiony and it did mm. it, it almost gets to the point where you instead of seeing from the character's point of view and listening to their thoughts you're thinking oh so the camera is following them you're almost yeah. like reading it as yeah. the movie by that point which in this kind of like um, slightly <laughs> violent ending we get up to, <laughs> I found worked really well. I, yeah. I quite like that. Oh, and now you've said violence. That's a topic I wanted to bring up. Okay. It's because it is quite a violent book. Yes, it's yes. Very it is. harsh. Um, very brutal. You know, she's thrown it as uh, the test she has to pass. Some of them are about fighting, and it's proper fight. It's 
knock you out until you're down and out for the count yeah. or you know fighting until one of you can't fight back anymore it's so brutal but i wasn't sure if it was doing it purposely to be edgy or whether it felt honest i just i couldn't make my mind up about it i think in some way right okay <sighs> because dauntless are Okay, I, I want to draw a comparison really between them and the army. Yeah. Between the initiation into Dauntless and the initiation that actually runs, um, and, and it's not just the army, it's most of the armed forces, mm. where um, basically to, to get someone to the stage where they can be an effective member of that team, when they can mm. be, uh, basically when they can kill somebody else. Yeah. You, there is a process. Yeah. You have to go yeah. through this uh, dehumanization is the sociological yeah. term because <laughs> I um I did I did do some sociology. Not enough to, you know, like I'm not an expert or anything, but I knew enough to look at this. Yeah. And a lot of what they're put through in their training to, mm. to Dauntless, um, it echoes that very well. Now I don't know if this is intentional. I don't know if it's something that was researched and she's looking into uh basically no, that would... That yeah. would make sense because by the end of it, that's what they turned into. Yeah. They're made into an army by one of the other factions, like unknowingly. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes sense. It's not just a faction, and it's, it's an army. And it starts yeah. out with literally yeah. just having her, um, having her conform. You know, they yeah. all start wearing the black, they're getting the tattoos, yeah. they're looking the same. It feels like self expression, but it's almost not. But it's, she's actually one of the crowd. Yeah. And then they start to think the same because yeah. they start, I mean, even just things like, I, I think, you know, even just with the train, they lose that mm. fear of jumping on and off the train. But then they know that the fight's not over until the other person is mm. unconscious. But yeah. that unconscious would eventually be dead yeah. because that is what they're really mm. progressing towards here. Mm. And yeah, I'm, I'm drawing that as a as a... I don't know. I, I might just be mm. off on one completely with this. Yeah. But I think that is really, really cleverly yeah. done because uh, that just it, it just made a lot of sense to me from yeah. from that. So no. <laughs> so going back to like my issue before of saying I just couldn't believe this world. Yeah. So me, if they, if she can continue this idea, do you think later on we might learn why the factions were made that way? The uh, one were the farmers. The easiest way to do it is we have the people who don't make it who do the crappy jobs, who are the factionless. We have yeah. the farmers, we have the teachers, the learners, we have the army, and we have the selfless people that are that kind of uh, control everything because they have to think of in a selfless way. They invent the laws. Yeah. So when you start to break it down like that, it's I start to because the one understand thing, it a bit better. The the one thing that would really make me start to understand is mm. if there was an enemy. Yeah. If the reason they needed that dauntless faction mm. was because they had to guard the rest. Yeah. Then and, and Well there's there's an outside, there's a boundary there, there isn't there? Yeah. So there's But there are farms, I think past yeah but you also get the sense that there's something there's got to be there something. might be something dangerous beyond the boundaries so so maybe we yeah. actually maybe we've talked ourselves into an understanding <laughs> maybe yeah. not because again like i i don't know have yeah. you read the sequel because I, no. I i definitely See, tried not to look at anything <laughs> so well that brings me to the question of would you want to read the next book i i would i would read the yeah. next book. i wouldn't um, I wouldn't sort of I, it wasn't the case that I finished that one and desperately thought right I need the next book yeah. now but there are things I want to know um, I think there, there are like there are things about it where I just have got questions and yeah. I think she might I so think, I think she think might have provided answers <laughs> at the start of this podcast I would have said no it's young adult I think I've decided young adult is not for not me for but I think we've talked ourselves into <laughs> reading it. Because yeah. the more we've talked about this, I think there's... I realised how clever a book it was. I mean, I've always said, um, you know, I'd always recommend it if you're into young adult. Because yeah. I think if you read this, if you were 14, 
15, 16, I think this would be one of the best books you'd ever read. Um, I would be going, I would be like, <laughs> I'd be there, I'd be doing the personality test. Yeah. Which faction am I? Yeah. I'd be trying to figure out what my fears would be, you know. Which one would you be? Go on, which house? Which, which, <laughs> which, which um, <laughs> house? So there what would the sorting hat? <laughs> Where would the sorting hat <laughs> Um I honestly, I'm going to say Amnity, which are the kind ones who we know least about. <laughs> Because like, we know at least now. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because yeah. I'm the not. Farmers. Well, I'm not that brave. I'm not. I'm not a brave person. Um, I am too selfish to be an abnegation. Um, because I love a lion. No way I'm giving that up to go and feed the homeless. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't. I will give to charity very happily. I will do it when it's comic relief. Yep, comic, I, every I year. Comic I'll relief. I'll text that number. I. I if do, David I, Tennant asks me to. Oh, if David Tennant asks me to. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that I would struggle to be completely honest about everything all the time. I not that I I like to lie. It's just it's it's how do you be that honest with yourself? You know how can you be so open about your feelings? And I I yeah I don't think I could hold up in candor. Um, erudite, possibly. I like I like mm. the idea of being a scholar. That's reading. That's, that's a possibility. Yeah. yeah, but I think that would be lonely. So by the process of elimination, are you allowed book clubs there? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Really? Because it seemed quite strict when we went there in the book. But... I'm sure they have like okay. If I can have a book meetings. club in in Erudite, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> if I can't have a book club, I will smuggle books over to Amity and read them there with my yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah, they seemed quite happy. They seemed the happiest out of the lot, didn't they? <laughs> But again, we saw the least of them, yeah. so maybe that's maybe we're grossly misrepresenting them by saying they seem kind and happy. Yeah. Well, she meets a friend from there, doesn't she? Yeah. Who's decided to join that faction, and who's like, "Whoa, you seem like it's it's really hard. You seem kind of depressed. You should have joined my faction. I'm yeah. having like we're we're drinking cider and singing songs." Oh, that guy, yeah, in the yeah. back of like the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um. Yeah, yeah. What about you? I think. I'd be Candor. Is it Candor who are the honest people? I, yes, I they're think, the honest. I think I could. I think you could do that. I'd. I think I'd like to imagine myself somewhere between uh, erudite and dauntless, so brave and scholarly. But yeah. I think ultimately that's probably the one that defines me. I'm very honest. Sometimes, like, not to my disadvantage. Sometimes, but, <laughs> but I think it could I'm be a very, very honest person generally. I think. I think. I think it could be very. Um, I don't know the word like it would it would remove a lot of um stress almost to have mm. that view of the world where something's yeah. either right or it's not you know mm. you don't have to agonize over a decision because it's a snap judgment because you've already you already know either either mm. it's yes or no there is no in between you don't have to worry about it mm. you know that that would be fun i could see i could see the kind and if of you're surrounded, being good if you're surrounded by other people who speak their mind then yeah. you'd be more comfortable to do it you're not gonna yeah. you don't have to hurt someone's feelings when you yeah. know they're just being honest and yeah. you're just supposed to be honest in return yeah it'd be quite freeing yeah maybe i think it'd be quite good yeah, yeah. so uh final thought final thoughts yeah <laughs> final thoughts <laughs> um i I think I've had like wildly inappropriate thoughts regarding four, so I probably shouldn't be allowed to read any subsequent books. Um, I I did not see the reasoning behind the inclusion of Trish's dad as a character. I don't think he, I don't think there was anything in that story he provided that wasn't already provided by a different character. So I am intrigued to see where that's true. He's going yeah, because um, because he's supposed to be like what happens when abnegation goes wrong because he does not take it the news that his kids have left very well and starts to act quite selfishly because he doesn't go to see either of them when he should and the mother goes without him yeah so he's quite bitter which is very against the faction so it shows how easily you can how maybe they're not quite like as self- yeah so how maybe they're not quite as selfless as that's supposed to be. I think the rising tension between the basically the other factions and mm. um, abnegation. I think Triss was supposed to be tied into that because of her dad's involvement on the council. Yeah. I think she was already tied into that. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think yeah. he was he necessary there. Uh, then right at the end, her mother sacrifices herself mm. for Triss, and then like 
20 pages later so does her dad and i'm a bit like why yeah, was that it's... necessary if her mum just did this with bigger dramatic impact yeah i don't know maybe i'm being harsh maybe there's more of him in the sequel maybe we understand mm. another layer of what he what he does but i think i think he has a part to play but i think it's just so minor that it's really not that important <laughs> I just think it was overshadowed by <laughs> Tobias's... Oh, did we actually mention the whole for Tobias and his dad um, plotline like, yet? Yeah, have we talked about... No, I think we kind of skimmed past it. Yeah, time. but I think because Tobias left and became for because he was being abused by his father... Yeah, so he was abnegation as well. So he was yeah. Abne- yeah, he was abnegation as well. And he is divergent. That was confirmed, mm-hmm. I believe. Yes, because they had to inject him with the second serum because he was also immune to the first one yeah yeah. um and so that you know retroactively does make a lot more sense as to why he twigged on so early that Triss is 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 divergent but um i felt like that backstory for him it it actually works really well because it make you really see why he's made the choices that he has um including reaching out to to Triss because it is that link back and you suddenly think well actually yeah they're really suited to each other yeah um I can't remember where I was going with this <laughs> rambling explanation because this isn't really a final thought, but you know, yeah. sorry. Um, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I, I yeah. liked it. I don't feel as though it's a perfect world that's been created. I no. feel like she gives me a lot of questions. Yeah, I think it's got some flaws. Um, but I have to, to its credit, I started out very cynical of this book. Very, very cynical. Yeah and this kind of won me over and talking about it today I, you know there's even more to it and I did quite like the idea of what diversion means and it's all about your choices it's not just about your personality puts you in a box Yes, it's you can it's you choose, choose um, so I think it's, it's a book with something to say and I think if especially if you're like 14 to 16 you would love you it you would love it yeah. so and yeah. I mean, am I right in saying this is her debut novel, Veronica Roth? I don't think uh, I've heard the name before. I think so. So, yeah, yeah well done. Basically, <laughs> really, yeah, well, really well, well done, done on that. Round of applause. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I would, I would yeah. give. Um, I just want to. I have to make the point about the magic healing tattoos that they get in this book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, the characters keep getting these tattoos and. We're in an environment where aftercare is really not a priority here. Nobody gets any infections. Nobody's skin starts falling off. And I'm like, wait, what is up with this? But yeah, other than that. Yeah. <laughs> other than that, um, yeah, liked it. Liked yeah. it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, we don't quite have a letter, but I had uh, someone semi following up from oh, last okay. week awesome uh because last week we were talking about continuations and tie-ins mm. and um we talked about george rr R. martin possibly not getting to finish the books but telling the tv show how to end, how it. To end it yeah um so there was a similar thing with scott pilgrim so oh. by the time the film was being made yes uh the last book hadn't come out yet yeah, so I think when he, I think Edgar Wright was aware, semi aware of the ending, or had been told the ending, but he changed the ending for the film. Yes, which because the film it, it did condense down the entire plot. There, there's not there's not yeah. intended to be a Scott Pilgrim yeah. sequel film, as far as I know. Yeah. It, that was the whole story. But I tr- The thing is, I try to like the ending of the film, but. I always feel like it's a little bit of a letdown for me personally. I know people that still like absolutely. I love the film, but the ending. I think I'd rather. Where Where are it off. you Where are you starting ending? Where does it deviate? Um. Well, there's an argument that they get into, and I just don't understand where the argument comes from because it's nothing like anything they have in the book. They have arguments in the book, but it's not about this. It's very strange. Um, I think it's just in the film. It's depicted that he's getting annoyed that she's got so many exes who are evil, and he's sick of, that's and he's to him and he's, he's sick of fighting them, and he's getting annoyed at her past, and she's going, "Well, it's in the past. It's it's not up to you," <laughs> which yeah. makes sense. But I, 
it wasn't satisfying having read the, so the it didn't seem to stay true to the character in your opinion then mm, not really I don't know it just seems to come from nowhere I mean it didn't seem to quite have the thought and the lightheartedness and the final battle is just like so completely different it had some excellent points in it yeah like I can't the, say the restart dislike, yeah, the, the, you know, the, the, the new life and, and, I can't yeah. say I disliked the final battle yeah. um, I did but really you, enjoy have that have you read the comics? no I haven't read them, read them. Um, it doesn't surprise <laughs> me to hear that it ended differently in the comics yeah. um, at all actually yeah. Because I understand they couldn't I'll, I'll, I must point that out they could not have ended it the same as the comics because there was so much more story and it was a bit more intricate and there's this whole thing about when she gets agitated and angry she starts to glow and it's not really mentioned and she kind of covers her, her head and to hide it Yeah, and it's not explained for ages and then right at the end it's, it comes it's explained play. and there's lots of other backstory and side stories in it and so they couldn't have done it the same but at the same time I just I don't know it's always been a little bit of a letdown <laughs> as soon as it gets towards that territory towards the end yeah I mean I didn't feel that it ended badly I you know mm. I didn't I didn't feel that um it did an injustice to the setup but yeah. um yeah I mean it definitely feels as though there's kind of a bit of a for the drama real like um, rationalization there and then mm. they get into that fight um, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't seem to serve a much bigger purpose other than yeah. just like oh no we've got an extra 10 minutes of movie split them up and then they can reconcile yeah which yeah. is you know maybe harsh but, of me I don't I don't know I, I'm not on the writing team <laughs> but read the books yeah they are so worth your time like it's the best thing about them is that it's a book where you go yes this is about people this is for people my age for this time of life yes. you're not in school or your university anymore you've not quite figured out your life yet and it's just perfect yeah <laughs> yeah it's brilliant um so thank you to andrew dieper for that yeah Dieper. I gave that a, an accent, and I know he told me how to pronounce. <laughs> I put an accent on there. It's, it's, it's really late, but <laughs> yeah. like by my standards, it is, quite it is late. really late. I right think now. we've. I think this is probably the longest one yet. And I is it? How long? I didn't why? think it was going to be. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> this is the trouble you get me. Uh, particularly when I'm tired, if you get me yeah. talking about something, I will not shut up ever. That's okay. Um, <laughs> If you would like to send in an email, letter, whatever. Yeah, the, tell us your thoughts. The email is bookdragonspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we will have uh, Twitter handles, which will be in the description below. Um, there will be a list of books. I haven't even done the list of books for last week. Oh, I'm behind already. That's it's, cool. It's been a busy week. <laughs> it really has. Um, <laughs> but um, information will come through eventually. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to know something, likelihood, it'll be in the description. Um, so I'd be interested to know if, I mean, because firstly, we have listeners. This is this is news <laughs> to me, actually. Um, yeah. Is there anything you want us to, to talk about? Is there anything you want us to read? Because, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm up yeah. for that. I've got yeah. about a million books of my own, but if there's any requests, <laughs> I'd well, like to hear. I, the, the ideas for book club are like piling up I'm going oh I should revisit that oh I should do that yeah. and then someone's mentioned something yesterday and I'm thinking oh well so as we get to towards Halloween I think we'll bring in the creepy horror stuff yeah I'm gonna have to have a look at what I've got yeah. I'm <laughs> sure I have somewhere got a sequel to Dracula that I picked up for like a pound at charity <laughs> shop so yeah I'm gonna have to do some yeah, I don't know yeah. what I'm gonna read next officially because uh yeah. I'm not reviewing Mary Gentry for you guys. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'll read something better and then I'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but Good Omens is, is still in the pipeline. We've not forgotten. I am optimistically going to say next week and I'm going to get force myself to finish it. And I keep forgetting that it's there, that I need to read it. <laughs> so I'll waste an afternoon going, what do I do now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> read about the apocalypse uh, you know it's all yeah, happening in Tadfield yeah. yeah it's all kicking off now is it's, it the, is the it? aliens have landed oh I love it <laughs> the Dalek 
Well, the one shaped like a pepper pot anyway. Yeah, this yeah. is heavy time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm right around that point. Oh, you're getting there. It's yeah, all good, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. Um, more to come next week. Hopefully yeah. we'll record Hopefully on Friday. On Friday this time. Should be doing. Which means the next episode should be up by the weekend. Yes. Hopefully, I'm gonna else. aim for that now. My, uh, yeah, I, I should have I should have a bit of a, a resolution to my uh, my to my time leeching situation. So yeah. Well, well the the month ahead is gonna be a bit crazy, a bit weird. Uh, basically, for the rest of this month, um, I'm very busy a lot of weekends. Yeah. So there's gonna be one weekend where I'm going off to Comic Con. So I think we oh, might so have jealous. so we might have so to jealous. we might have to skip. Uh, we'll make it work. Week. We'll figure yeah. it out. We'll, we'll do something um, on a weeknight. So for the it's lulls. very possible we won't have a study schedule until November. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that okay. out there. So yeah, no, no you've been forewarned. <laughs> but people were impressed that there was already an episode of one. So, oh, well, so there we go. So we're doing well so far. <laughs> At least we're progressing. You know, it's it's all progress. Um, yeah, and that's it for today. So sure. thank you. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye. See you next time.